Hey, everybody, this is Scoots, and you're listening to Bedtime Stories from Sleep With Me, which is just stories from the Sleep With Me podcast. Uh, so if you like the stories from Sleep With Me, you've been checked out our original podcast to full length. Uh, it's uh, called Sleep With Me. And if you enjoy these stories, you could support the production of the show and get tons of stories only versions of Sleep With Me on Sleep With Me Plus. If this show is worth, if you listen to it on a regular basis, you say, this show is worth 60 bucks a year to me. This show is worth 120 bucks a year to me. Sign up. Uh, you can sign up monthly or annually. You get a podcast with story-only versions of Sleep With Me uh, like this, but uh, ad-free. You get full versions of Sleep With Me, bonus versions of Sleep With Me. And uh, you help us keep making this show well into hopefully uh like the long long future so but if you're new check this out this is uh, called bedtime stories from sleep with me and it'll be bedtime stories from sleep with me podcast thanks and good night ladies and gentlemen boys and girls and friends beyond the binary it's time for the podcaster who would have trouble uh, spelling la lisa or la la land or, you know, because, like, well, L-A, L-I-S-A, I, but I always add two, maybe it's because I confuse La La Land, because I always say L-A, L-A, I-S-A, oh, I missed uh, too many L-A's and not enough L-I's. But, you know, that's one of my favorite L-I's. Another one is the L-I Island. Uh, so whether you're La Lisa or you're a Long Islander or you're anywhere, anywhere at all, uh, uh, if you're confused, you say, holy, what in the name of Ron Con- Like, uh, I don't even know, like, I'm not familiar with Ron Conkema. Don't call me Ron Conkema. Call me the Ron Conqueror, uh, because uh, it doesn't make any sense, and that's perfect because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And remember, when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow, these sponsors are how I'm here free for you twice a week. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. If you're looking for the most comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me podcast or bedtime stories from Sleep With Me, you can get yourself a pair of sleep phones, like Sleep With Me merchandise uh, sleep phones with different uh, logos and cool stuff on there. And you could get that at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones and use Sleep With Me at checkout to save five bucks off your order. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's Scoots here, and uh, this is a little bit uh, different. Uh, episode here, I think. Uh, I'm gonna, like, uh, so I've been thinking about you know, I'm always in the place of trying to, you know, personally grow. And uh, I'm only laughing just because I'm feeling very vulnerable sharing this uh, and, and being like, okay, this is going to be this is an interesting creative constraint, you know, of trying to put you to sleep and uh, tell a story and see where it goes. And, you know, I'm still on the journey. I'm still searching like a lot of us. And sometimes I forget I'm even looking for something, right? And then sometimes I'm reminded, oh, wait, I'm kind of looking for something here. What am I needing? And, I mean, one of my cornerstones are, are the affirmations in Ruth King's book, Mindful of Race. Uh, so if you haven't read that book, uh, it's an amazing book. But in addition to the amazing content, it also has these amazing affirmations in there. And, uh, like, as I've been thinking about that and... Uh, Let's see, where am I going with this? Well, like, because I'm probably going a direction you might not expect. You know, when you see someone that has some sort of, like, a little bit more freedom of their emotions, but but not freewheeling in their emotions or their feelings, and an ability to really have, uh, like, a, like, a clearer boundaries, but also, like, a deep-seated confidence, uh, and I, this, for some reason, I was just, I've been thinking about this in different ways over the past, a lot of times when I'm walking the dog and, and just thinking about, uh, boundaries, not just like, uh, I don't know. And saying, huh, like, uh, there's a part of me that I'm trying to reestablish a connection with that doesn't trust me. I'll be honest with you. Uh, 
And it's like a, you know, more childish, childlike part of me and saying, Hey, I think you can trust me. I'm trying here to, to, um, to take care of you and make good choices and keep you safe and tr- have some more trust and hope in the world and draw that, that kid out and say, it's okay. I'm here to soothe you. I'm here to see you. And I'm here to walk with you in the world. But that kid says, well, sometimes you don't follow through on, are you going to follow through on this, uh, uh, Drew and, uh, scoots? <laughs> this is more true, but, but, uh, but what's interesting is, so I said, yeah, but I don't like, I said, what do you really need? And I said, well, I want to feel a little bit more confident in the world. And then I said, well, what kind of person or what kind of confidence are you looking for? Like, like particularly with these harder to, to, to put, I said, I can, I can feel how you're feeling. And I see some of that vulnerability and some of those f- physical and, and emotional feelings that might be harder to put words to. So what is it you're looking for? Can you give me, and I, I know it might be hard to put into words. Can you, get, can you describe it to me or give me an essence of it? And this is a process, so maybe that I did that and then it bubbled back up. Uh, but I kept coming back to it. I said, well, what, what do you need? Like, how can I provide it? it, it like, or how can I better understand uh, I mean, I know what you need, but I don't know how to, like, uh, there's the idea of faking it till you make it, but it's kind of hard when you're faking something till you make it that you don't know what it is, right? And then it came to me and uh, came, came very clearly and probably one of the most misquoted scenes for by me from a movie because I'm going to misquote it now, because then every time I go to rewatch it, I'm like, oh, that's not how it happened in my mind. And also a movie I've been trying to get my daughter to watch, maybe the extended version. I've only watched one and a half movies of the, whatever, extended versions of the Lord of the Rings, a fellowship, like a uh, Lord of the Rings uh, trilogy. And I know, like, I want to watch it before the series starts or the movie, the next round of movies start. Or before, you know, uh, like, I don't know. Here's the thing. Is Timmy C going to be in those movies or those things? Like, I don't know any of the casting, but I say, wait a second. Could we get, is there a chance of that? But uh, I said, okay, so there is a scene in the first movie. Lord of the, there's Fellowship of the Rings, the Two Towers, and, uh, the, the final, no, Desolation of Smog's uh, one of the Hobbit movies. Return of the King is the last one. Thank you. And if you're familiar with these movies or probably memes, and it, it's hard for me, I said, wait, those movies come out in the 90s? But probably it came out in the aughts, I'm guessing. But so there's there's a character in there. Well, let's let's not get it. Well, yeah, there's a character in there called Gandalf. Gan- in the first movie, it's called his his name is Gandalf the Grey. And Gandalf the Grey has been made various multiple appearances in my life uh, throughout my existence. So uh, I'm not exa- I know I read The Hobbit first because uh, I can picture The Hobbit like because even what's interesting. Well, I think this kind of, like I can picture one a version of The Hobbit in my hand as a child, and actually, it seems like the cover that they're st- they've been using for a long time of a, a mass market paperback, and then. I, I read. I probably when I tried to read Lord of the Rings and it didn't quite. Uh, it was dense, you know. It was probably beyond my ability. But you know, I read it, and you know, some of my friends read it. This was kind of in, when we were in our fantasy kick, and there was also like animated film or miniseries. And I know we watched that, me and my friends. There was also a game. I don't know if it was on, my friend Charlie had it, whose house we would go at to play computer games or and video games, actually, actually now I'm thinking about it. But uh, he uh, had this game, but it was very, I think it was more of a strategy game. 
because you can remember every time we tried to play it, uh, uh, like you couldn't figure it out and it involved a lot of maps. And then occasionally there'd be like this, uh, side scrolling sequence with the, the companions. Is that what they're called? The, the fellowship of the ring and the companions, I think maybe, I, I don't know. No, the companions are from Dragonlance, but so of them side scrolling and then you'd go somewhere so I don't know the video game other than, uh, I think I may even tried to play it on an emulator. Maybe I'll try it later today, uh, to play it. So th that was one thing. Then later in life, and I can picture exactly where I was. I don't know what job I had. So I remember getting curious about the fellowship of the rings again. And I think it was one of those synchronicity things where I was like getting curious about rereading it. I was doing a lot of reading cause I had delivery jobs. And so like, uh, you, you, when you do a delivery job, you never know, like if you're going to be running early or the person is running late or whatever you, you need a, having a paperback. It was always a big plus. So I remember picking up at a, like a Goodwill or a rescue mission, like a, like a thrift store type place. Cause I can picture myself in there. I want to say it was in Syracuse, New York, but, but uh, like I wasn't living in Syracuse, but maybe that's just cause I, that's where the archetypal thrift store is in my mind. Cause I think I also tried on some clothes or maybe the books were by a dressing room. But I'm guessing it was probably when I was like out on a delivery and I saw a Goodwill. I said, hey, let me pop in there. I don't think it was a Goodwill because it was a very high ceilings. Though, I don't know. Some of the newer Goodwills that are in like like a, a old big box stores are like that. But this was years ago. But this was before the movies came out, but they were in production. So at some point I picked up A Fellowship of the Ring or The Fellowship of the Ring, whatever the first book is called and reread it and again got swept up in that world again and then read the other two books then saw the movies uh, as they were released then probably rewatched the movie movies at least once and then whenever the extended versions came out i bought those but i haven't only made it halfway through the two towers uh just because i want to watch it with my daughter but so at some point, so during the movie, so this is during the fi film, uh, and I believe it's Ian McKellen, right? Who plays Gandalf the Grey in the first movie. Now this is a deviation from the books, but yeah, Gandalf is a character. Also appears in the Hobbit, the book, but also the Hobbit films, which are much different than the book. And we're talking about the Lord of the Rings movies, uh, so, okay, so in the first movie, there's a bunch of stuff happening. And this was a pretty hyped scene as far as, like, as a build-up to the movie release it came out. Because they said this is a, so this was the beginning of the aughts. Uh, they said, oh, boy, there's this one scene at the end of the movie with the CGI character. And it's, you know, like, uh, groundbreaking and all that. And that character's name was the Barlog. Uh, and I don't know a lot about the mythology of the Barlog, uh, and I probably should d dig deep into it more. But it's a, but, but part of a sequence where they're going through the mines of Moria. I think that's what they, they're, they're trying to take a shortcut. In case you're unfamiliar, I'll try to give you a version without spoiling it too much. But uh, there's like, the, like a, <laughs> how do you do a shortcut? Uh so you have the, the, the Fellowship of the Ring, right? Their job is to get this ring uh, to Mount Mount Doom, I think, and, and get, throw it in the lava, keep it from Lord Saur Sauron, uh, which you shouldn't get mixed up with Saruman, which, of course, I always do, and then, like, do that. But the ring tempts everybody. But anyway, they're out on this thing, and, of course, Sauron's trying to catch them to get the ring. 
And so they end up stuck and they got to go, they got to go cut through this mountain because it's the most, all the past, you know, they're having trouble. Like, uh, or these mines, which go through this mountain and the mines have been shut down for a while and they like, uh, you know, there's trouble in the mines. Uh, and they have like, one level of trouble. Then they, uh, trying to get out of there. And Gandalf's already warned him, like, boy, boy, like, sleeping deep in this mountain is uh, stuff we don't want to wake up. But they wake it up, this Barlog. And Barlog is like a, ba from a, like a Barlog, you've seen a Barlog before, or a version of it in big boss battles. Probably, some games, probably close to the ultimate big boss battle. And now that I'm talking this out, I'm glad we are, because... Uh, we got a lot of powerful themes here that, uh, like reflect this little kid I was talking to because they say, well, Hey, I'm looking for something. So you have like in, in this part, uh, I'm thinking I'm picking it more apart for the archetypal stuff and not the plot stuff. Uh, you got like a different levels of, uh, uh, stuff that would be a concern to the, uh, the, the, if we're project, if we're doing some project exterior projection and, you know, whatever, let's just say Scoots is made up of all these different parts or all of us, if you want to project yourself of the, the, the companions, the fellowship of the ring and maybe that'd be another, maybe that could be something else we could go through instead, uh, but so this one, this time we're, tr we're looking at this Gandalf and maybe as the episode goes on, we'll look at these other ones. But if you're looking, okay, what are they worried about? Well, one, they got to get through the, like they have their mission, which they're just at the beginning of, uh, and they got to get this ring across the entire country. Oh, also I just downloaded this app, uh, talk about sleep with me tangent, I don't know where I saw it, but it's like an app where you could walk, uh, like if you're into walking or running, I think it just tracks your running or walking, but you could eventually walk uh, Frodo and Sam's entire journey and, uh, uh, I'll try to, I'll try to remember to put a link to it in there. Okay. But so... So, okay, so at this particular part of the movie, you have your overall long-term goals, right? You have your midterm goal, which is just to get through uh, this uh, mine so you could get through the mountain onto the next stage of your journey. Now, luckily for them, spoiler, they do get a rest a little bit after this, some respite. I think, but I always get stuff. Maybe they don't. Maybe maybe they, this isn't where they get the rest, but uh, maybe it's in a couple more scenes. Uh, so, but so, okay. So where are we? So, so, okay. So we have the, the long-term goal, the medium-term goal, and then the short-term goal is just to get uh, like across this one bridge. And meanwhile, the bar log is coming, right? Uh, and they're all trying to get across the bridge. Also, uh, they're dealing with other antagonists, like smaller scale ones. All this to say, after whatever, 15 minutes, is uh, so they're all doing that. It's, going, it's not going perfect. The bridge is starting to uh, teeter-totter. And, uh, you know, you say, like just like in a good movie, you say, oh boy, are they gonna, is everyone going to make it? Are they going to make it? And that, that's before, that's like, then the bar log comes and, and then they say, whoa, if it couldn't have got worse, it just did. And we learn that this bar log is the biggest boss, boss battle. Actually, one of the biggest ones in the whole uh, sequence of films, as far as, uh, capability and size. And so what happens is, uh. The Barlog is chasing them, and Gandalf is this old wizard, right, or older wizard, w wise. Uh, but Gandalf also, w some of the things I like about Gandalf, and especially Ian McKellen's portrayal of Gandalf, but I think even in the books, from what I mem remember, 
is while Gandalf is kind of reserved, one, he's looked upon as a leader, right? Uh, in, in, but in a sense of like, not like uh, this perfect leader or leader of an organization, but he's like a f- figure people look forward to visiting. And he is, uh, I'd have to remember like seeing him cry, but he is quick. He does have a temper, but a, a healthy temper. And I think that's really important for me. And he also ha- like, so he has the ability to express those feelings and like also takes people to task for not following through on stuff and, and has the ability to, to take a strong position without worrying about what other people think of him. Gandalf is also quick to laughter and joy and has fun. I think back in the day, I used to like look at, also enjoy that, like Gandalf liked to smoke and drink, but uh, hey, let's just look at it more symbolically that he is a joyous uh, person that has fun. And so, so those are things, especially when you think about like models for behavior. Now, you say, Scoots, didn't you model your behavior after like uh, sitcom characters like Kirk Cameron's character in Growing Pains? And I'd say, yeah, yeah, this is a mistake. This is a road we've been down before. You're right. As uh, I did uh, see Kirk Cameron's character, which uh, growing pains. Uh, I don't even know what his character on the show was called. Mike Seaver, I think, or Zach, Zach uh, whatever from Saved by the Bell, could be another example. Uh, you don't think Tony Maselli from Who's the Boss? There's probably other ones, uh, but I see. Yeah, I've been led. I've been misled by sitcom. This is a film, though, so and it, based on underlying literary material. So isn't it more okay for me to find a healthy rule? Oh, well, well, let's just think about it then. Okay, so but all that aside, if we're just having fun, so, so what I'm leading towards is that. There's this one sequence where Gandalf uh, says uh, he's standing on this bridge. Uh, Frodo Baggins, uh, the w- w- ring bearer, is that what he's called? The holder of the, r- the ring bearer. I, think, I don't know if that's what he's officially called, but he's like the one in charge of the ring. The, tr- the, the real hero who has the tough, toughest task Though I would say, oh, well, I guess we get into those things. So, okay, so Gandalf says, so he says, Frodo, keep moving. Don't worry about me. And then Gandalf says to the Barlog, uh, you shall not pass. I think that's incorrect, though. I think he says, you will, like he said, I always think you shall not pass. Uh, but he probably says something else. And I can remember watching on DVD at a party or something and we kept rewatching it again and everybody was yelling it and dancing around. Probably we were rewatching it before we saw the second movie. And he, he puts his uh, sta- staff down and it makes a bridge fall and he falls. Well, first he, it seems like, well, I don't want to spoil it, but, but I will spoil it. Well, I have to spoil it, I guess. Uh, I won't spoil the specifics. I mean, this movie came out in like 2003 or 2002 or 2000 or something. So, so oh yeah, let's just say, so Gandalf unexpectedly saves the day. I think what he thought was he was doing a self-sacrifice, and then he thought he would get out of the self-sacrifice. But then the Barlog says, oh, no, you didn't. And uh, and uh, he, he gets Gandalf and takes Gandalf along for a ride. But I think having that, what I'm in search of is that uh, fierceness. I, that's the word I've been looking for that I haven't been able to find. Uh, and I just found it here. We found it together. Is uh, this fierce defender uh, named Gandalf. Like, Gandalf, I guess I'm talking to you directly. And all the people that created Gandalf and the versions of Gandalf is thank you for your fierceness, uh, because I would like to figure out how to find that healthy fierceness, uh, 
inside of me that says you won't pass. Uh, but not so much that says that, because I do have to let a lot more pass, like, uh, like through that one last uh, stretch of the bridge, right? Because sometimes I say you shall not pass, but it's like way back before we got into the mine, and we would have never got into the mine if uh, my part of me that doesn't feel fierce, it just feels more defensive. It says, well, let's not, pa- let's not pass at all, but definitely don't let them pass even close to us. But if I knew I had someone in, inside me, which I'm assuming I do somewhere, that's why I'm talking about this to try to, uh, like, let it come out, is uh, to say, you shall not pass, oh boy, so that the Frodo in me, even though in the movie it's a little bit different. So, again, this is projection. Sorry, Gandalf, I'm double projecting. Uh, like that... Uh, um, like, so that the Frodo and me or Sam Ganji or whatever says, oh boy, okay. And I realize if you're a Lord of the Rings super fan, I might be, uh, this might not be the episode for you. But I, I don't know, Gandalf, I appreciate that fact. So if there is, if, if I could find, if I could talk to the little Andy inside me and say, hey, there, I think there is this Gandalf in there that would would be fierce in your defense and say, hey, no, 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 not passing by here. You can get close, but you're not passing here. Uh, just knowing that was available to you. Because he, it was a, a holistic fierceness, right? Or, or am I just, that's how I feel about it, is uh, it wasn't even, as we'll find out, uh, one-sided or based in some sort of right or wrong or all or nothing. It was just saying, you're not coming this way. I can't let you come this way because I'm here to defend the ring bearer and protect, you know, that mission, which for me, it's like about protecting little Andy, right? And giving little Andy a safe place to exist, uh, but not overly, not impossibly safe, right? So... That's one thing I appreciate about it, you, Gandalf, and that I hope I can access more of. Then the other thing I appreciate is that you showed us, uh, you know, and again, I don't know, have any idea what if this occurred in the book, uh, but there's like this transformative nature that you go on between the two movies and at the start of the second film, or at some point in the second film. And my imagination and what really happened are two different things, or my memory. But so my impression is that you and the Barlog went on a journey. I think you, like, fell to, like, the center of the earth or something. And then you went back and forth, possibly for thousands of years, in a place beyond time. And eventually... Like maybe this again, maybe all made up. So I apologize to everybody that's a fan of this stuff, but that you like, uh, relented in some sense. And then like the bar lag, I don't like, think that you necessarily defeated the bar log, but you won through like non-resistance. Right. Uh, and maybe again, that's, but that, there was something transformative about your relationship with the Barlog beyond just uh, a fight for one victor. But maybe not, because I haven't, uh, like, re- rewatched that part of the film in at least a couple of years. And, but then that transformed you from Gandalf the Grey into the White Wizard... Which, again, the movie, I don't believe, maybe there's exposition or or stuff that I'm missing out on. And when I first saw the movie, the first two times I saw every film, I was definitely under the influence. So my memory is, and then maybe I was under the influence of my phone the, the last time I watched it. But like I said, I only watched half of the second movie. But that's where you make your transformation. But I don't know if it's necessarily explained, right? And then when do you have to, wait, wait a second, but then you also have to go up to the tower. But that's when you're, are you grand off to gray in that part? Or is that when you become the white wizard? 
forgot about that part of the film too. But I think you're, but whatever you, you, you become, you transcend into some other, uh, version of yourself, uh, a little bit less grounded on earth and more ethereal and more powerful, but still wanting to be involved in earth's events. But you definitely have a more serene, uh, deal. So, so you're a little bit like your humanity, like your temper and your, your, your mirth and your humor, I think are a little bit dialed down though. You still have some amusement. You have a different kind of confidence, uh, because you've been to the world beyond. So that might be helpful too for me, but also an example of like, uh, like saying you shall not pass does not mean that, uh, like it's all, it never becomes an all or nothing situation, right? To say, Hey, well, uh, like, can I also be curious about whatever, like, like, uh, and say, well, could this transform? Like this again, I've never done any martial arts. I would be interested one day if I ever had, you know, the d- d- double version of me, because that is like that, like uh, what people talk about, like redirecting the energy in different martial arts. So Gandalf, I could, if I could call on you, whether it's deep within me or some version of you in the archetypal universe or the energy out there, to to help me find that within me, that ability to say with fierce confidence, "You shall not pass," uh, to give some sort of soothing and confidence to not just me, but for the other listeners out there. I think this is something a lot of us need as human beings. And sometimes it might just be what we're bringing in, uh, this is to say like, Hey, this shall not pass. Uh, let me move my, let me, uh, acknowledge and see my thoughts and then uh, redirect them or put myself back in the present moment, which Gandalf seems to inhabit. So there's that. While I'm uh, asking for favors, though, like uh, next up, uh, like uh, Sam, I'd like to send you uh, uh, a bit of a, a bit, bit of a, you know, projection request. So first of all, probably, I think Sam Ganges the name. And I think this is like thinking about the books. Maybe I read the books twice in a row, but I'm not sure. Uh, um, so I'm not positive. So, but the, like uh, Sam worked for Frodo at first, maybe, and but was also Frodo's best friend. I always felt like there was other elements of their friendship. Uh, like uh, like even when I read the books, I said, "Wait a second, is this like?" Uh, how, where is Sam at? You know, like, uh, like he loves Frodo unconditionally. Uh, I think we could safely say, and I think that's portrayed in the books and the movies uh, pretty well. And, but like one thing is, holy cow, like Sam has, now Sam's not patient with everybody. So with Smeagol, you're definitely, you, Sam does not necessarily have a lot of patience or open-mindedness. And some of that behavior, I'd say, Sam, okay. But, uh, so, but we're not going to, you know, nobody's perfect, right? Sam, Sam would be the first to admit it. None of us are perfect, uh, Mr. Scooter. Uh, but, uh, so one thing, Sam, I really appreciate is your patience. Holy cow. And it's a kind of, a different kind of patience than the one that gets glorified on most Hollywood. Oh, wait, nobody, <laughs> patience really doesn't get, uh, the promotion it deserves. But, uh, I particularly when I think about the patience, uh, you, cause your patience is grounded in this, uh, like a unconditional love or loyalty, some might call it, to, to both Frodo and uh, the the overall Frodo's overall mission, and also to the task at hand. I mean, that was like so much walking and so much, and then putting up with so much stuff, even like. Uh, you're not e- you weren't easy to deal with Sam, but neither was Frodo or Smeagol, right? 
So I would say that I, I definitely could use your patience, Sam. And a patience that's more grounded in, well, what do I have to do to be of service here and keep things moving forward? If I could ask you for that patience, this kind of feels, well, yeah, no, I, I mean, I need that really. And for the time being, I'm really going to use this. You know, sometimes people wonder, am I making this stuff up? Or, uh, But it's like I'd like to, to kind of find that visual. And, I mean, I guess for the time being until the show comes out, it will be the characters from the movies because they kind of dominate my imagination now. But to find that Sam Ganji level patience and say, okay, Let's keep it calm here. What are we supposed to be doing? I know we don't want to go on this journey. And, oh, boy, you're right. Does it never seem ending? And we got to deal with the Smeagol. And Frodo's irritable. Uh, well, okay, what do we need? I still got to, you know, we got to cook. We got to prepare things. We got to clean up. Uh, got to keep an eye on stuff. And also a wariness. Uh, I would say that, you know, maybe you could have used Gandalf's help in uh, helping your temper and your protectiveness. And maybe having Gandalf there obviously would have put Sam a little bit more at ease. But, uh, like, you were doing, you did a great job and you kept things going, even in difficult times. So, uh, Sam, if I could really channel that for you. Um, now let's see some of the other characters, uh, uh, let's see. So we have, uh, uh, the, the elf, uh, Orlando Bloom, uh, Legolas, uh, now Legolas, uh, I don't know, I mean, he definitely had an ease uh, but you had a good time too, like a very physical, fluid good time. And, uh, so I don't know, I get, I mean, I, I wish I could have your ease about the world and your fluidness overall, but, uh, I think especially your playful ease with others and, uh, your your just your your just ability to move about the world like I I guess like uh, what do they say wear the world like a loose garment uh, I don't know if the elves have a saying like that uh, but you seem to have that and obviously like I mean I guess this is tropey but you know elves love nature and and all, all those kind of things but you seem to also love. Uh, Another, like you had a good idea of like right and wrong, but I guess in more of the shades, right, of not an all or nothing right or wrong. But you were aware of uh, Strider and like and Frodo's mission. You're pretty dedicated, I guess, to the to to what you view as uh, the mission. And I think the most important thing I could take from you now that I'm talking it out is not just that wearing it like a loose garment, but the ability that gives you to cr creatively problem solve. I don't know, like snowboarding on a shield or, uh, you know, jumping on shoulders of uh, big things. So I would also like that uh, from you if I could possibly access that uh and especially, in, like, also when I'm driving or in crowds, I say, well, how could I be like Legolas in this situation and just uh, kind of uh, smoothly uh, roll through it? That would be, that'd be handy, right? Okay, so next up is uh, Gimli, right, is the, the dwarf. Uh, and is that, I'm, I'm not sure I'm G Gimli. I think that's it. And you're very curmudgeon, curmudgeonly uh, and skeptical. So I, I can definitely identify with those things and, you know, tend to express your displeasure. Uh, but you don't let it slow you down, right? You don't seem to fixate. Well, you do fixate on it a little bit. Uh, 
And maybe I guess I got to view it like uh, to let you do that, right? Uh, to have you along is important. And to say, oh, okay, go ahead. Like, uh, you could, yeah, go ahead and express you. You're still, you're still committed to the mission. You were there, you know, l- along the whole way. And, uh, like, uh, it's a bit of bluster, right, uh, what you're doing when you're correcting me. Because I, I definitely got you already. Or when you're kind of saying, oh, boy, this is, you know, or that's not how you do it. Or what? That's not a good idea. Or you know, I prefer I. W- I don't want that for dinner. All those things that you say, you're bl- it, it, it's stuff you're just letting out. Like you don't really have that much of a filter, but that doesn't mean you're standing in the way. You just got to express yourself, right? That's maybe just how you do it. And so, if you could help me remember that, that would be huge help. Is that? Uh, they say, okay, well, I don't have to, um, like I, I can, I can trust you. Right. I guess for me, a lot of times when I feel that part of me, that's similar to you expressing itself, I feel a little bit threatened and maybe it's just like a Gandalf saying, don't worry, he's on for, this is a trustworthy companion. You know, we didn't, you know, get Gimli in the fellowship. Gimli's not best friends with, uh, Lego loss by mistake. Uh, he, he's along here because he's he's a reliable, essential, trusted ally. And yeah, sometimes tr- not every trusted ally expresses themselves. It's going to make you co- way in a way that's going to make you comfortable all the time. But remember, uh, we're all heading in the same direction here together. We're all trying to get Frodo to the ring, to the Mount Doom. So, okay, so that's definitely important. So, uh, okay, so that's Gimli. Now, Boromir, uh, I mean, I guess I get mixed up because I say, holy, like, uh, now we're getting into the Game of Thrones, right? But I think Boromir, I think for me, it is about uh, kind of expanding that idea of, uh, like, uh, Sometimes people make bad choices for the right, wrong choices and for the, what they think is the right reason, or they get carried away and uh, their judgment gets clouded and they make a, a, a bad mistake. And uh, that happens. And we got to say, hey, uh, you're, you, cause you're kind of like an idealist, right? Uh, I mean, your idealist might not be the same that I have or that some of the other fellowship had. But uh, it is an ideal that you're striving towards, uh, towards solving things, right? In your mind, you had an ideal. And also that it's okay that some of that and some of those choices came from a vulnerable place. Uh, A place you say, well, you know, this is like... uh, of maybe disease, uh, they say, okay, well, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. You know, I'm sure you think even maybe, maybe someone said that to you, Hey, it's okay. And you also have the ability to change your choices or make a new choice moving forward. And, uh, but to remember, yeah, that's, uh, but also to remember, not to hold on to those ideas, like, like your idealism, also to balance the, the fellowship, right? Uh, I guess I have to remember that to not overly identify, uh, to say, well, was Bormir here getting a little too, like, uh, one note to say, no, this has got to, this is the only way to solve this, uh, and, uh, you know, I'm seeing the right way to do this, and, I'm going to have to take total control instead of saying, well, what's out of our control? Is there a way we can have your idealism, Bormir? But also say, you know, like in the serenity prayer, uh, they say, uh, uh, grant me the power to accept the things I can't. Can I change the courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference? 
uh, maybe you're the person that says, uh, it is it w- would be best served reminding me to say that or to pause, uh, which I guess leads into the next thing, which is uh, the uh, Strider or Aragorn, Ar- Ar- Aragorn, uh, or Aragorn. I, I always say Aragorn, 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 uh, who also has a lot of uh, quiet confidence, uh, competence. But you, I think, do represent that bridge uh, that Boromir couldn't walk across. uh, And you also have this confidence, holy cow. But to say, yeah, that might be out of our control. Let me see what we can do here. Oh, boy, this is frustrating. How are we going to fix this and figure it out uh, and keep things moving? Or what else can I do? Also, you have the ability to build alliances and go between other worlds uh, because of your kind of friendly confidence. But also you have a little bit of Gandalf in there, right? Like you have some, you you have a... a how you see things and uh, your limits. But you do that, you have a friendliness that allows you to be, you know, say, hey, I get along with the elves. Uh, Get along with these humans over here. I could get along with these humans over here. I can see something's not right and I'm going to be more curious about it. I'm going to feel, you know, feelings uh, when when it's appropriate for me to feel, you know, they come up. But I'm also going to do, you know, do the job. But I'm going to treat people with dignity and respect and friendly dignity and respect. And you got that kind of half smile on your face uh, that I think is necessary. So I think for you, I have to ask uh, for your friendliness most of all. And that half smile... And to say, yeah, you can, let's move, bet- it's good to move between these worlds and to be friendly between these worlds and say, hey, hey yeah, how can I build an alliance? Uh, like what you're doing here. Or, oh, I'm not so sure about this. Or isn't this a lovely thing the elves do? Uh, so hopefully you could guide me with that. Uh, I could look to you and just look at that look on your face and say, well, Strider was calm. And, uh, you, you know, you, 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 so there's that. Uh, and then we get to Frodo. Uh, whoops, I, I forgot Mary and Pippin. So, uh, Mary and Pippin, sorry about that. Uh, you are very necessary characters. Uh, and uh, really, like, you, so, huh. I guess if you two... Really, you are necessary. I forgot, I totally forgot about you, but I do need your spirit, not just of of curiosity, joyous curiosity about the world. Without that, the adventure wouldn't have moved forward, right? And you move the story forward because of your joyous curiosity. And then what you learned through your joy, joyous curiosity through other characters in the films uh you absorbed those skills, and you did change, uh, and you did change events and actually lead events. So that is something I need. Holy cow! Even to deal with all this other fellowship of the scoot, the fellowship of the scoots is your joyous curiosity. So help me find that on a regular basis. I have to stay curious. And uh, curiosity based in joy or uh, empathy and compassion. Maybe that's where Strider's uh, bridge is there. But you two, you, you're like, uh, hey, let, let, what is it? You, if you came into my world and somebody was selling mud pies, you'd probably eat one because you say mud pie. I love pies. Uh, spice, is it like a spice cake? No, it's a mud pie. It's a pie made of mud. Okay, I'll have one then. 
uh, you know, I'm sure you're kind of, uh, I'm sure a hobbit's constitution is different anyway. So, and you went along for the ride because you were curious, right? Uh, or you got to ride on Treebeard, who, uh, you know, I look up to so much. Also, I, you know, Bar- I don't know if anybody knows about Barky, the one, the tree god, uh, my belief system. But Mary and Pippin, I almost forgot, like I wasn't staying curious, right? Uh, and that's an important thing. And then finally, Frodo. Uh, Frodo, uh, holy cow. Uh, you, you, you teach me so much. You hold up the light to imperfection, to moodiness, but to go into the end of the line to, to, to endurance and resilience. Uh, I guess most of all, if we were looking for a buzzword for you, it'd be resilience and real resilience because, uh, you know, this faux resilience uh, that uh, sometimes some part of me says, fake it till you make it. You know, you, like, it wasn't like you just said, well, it's A, and trials are like, oh, I deal with A, then I get to B, then I overcome B, then I go to C. Oh, no, no. You did, over more than one time, go into that dark night of the soul, as they say, or the cave without lights, and felt hopeless, you know, felt a normal feeling uh, that someone would feel there, and still never forgot uh, what needed to be done and still was willing to take it to the end of the line. Also, sometimes you were nice when you could have been, even though sometimes you were grouchy and sometimes it was the ring and sometimes you didn't think you could go on. I mean, that's when Sam was there or uh, 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 Smeagol, uh, Gollum, or as a reminder for you. But, uh, you know, you really, uh, yeah, resilience, endurance, but not forgetting that you're, I mean, I guess for me, cause I got to watch, you know, I get to project, uh, to say, Hey, like, uh, think of all the times Frodo, uh, wasn't perfect. Uh, but Frodo remembered, uh, and that Frodo didn't want to do it. Right. You did it even when you didn't want to do it, uh, at all understandably too no one could uh and you didn't really so much have a choice uh you said well and in that sense that's important to remember is like uh uh an an acceptance of that fact uh and sometimes you're not going to want to you're not going to want to you're going to feel some resentment or, or some resistance to that but for most of the time you say well Got to take this ring to Mount Doom or wherever, whatever Scoots forgot. Throw it in the lava, the place of its forging. And maybe the movie you think it will end multiple times, but it has more than one ending because uh, that way you get like, uh, so uh, like that's one thing Scoots <laughs> like uh, thought the first time he saw it, I guess, that he's still uh, thinking about. Just like Frodo, though, I said, well but I still got to get to this end of this episode. And so starts with Gandalf and it ends with Frodo, but I need all of you. I need all your help. Uh, but most it's about accepting all those parts of us, right? That we're all one felt, you know, we're all fellowship. At least most of us, uh, got a lot of these things in us that are walking. Where are they going? Uh, Maybe we don't have as clear a destination as Frodo does, uh, but we have all these skill sets we could say, oh, okay, well, can I be joyously curious about this? Uh, can I take that next step with with Sam, with knowing Sam's there to care for me and uh, knowing neither one of us wants to do it today, but uh, we know, or Sam said, come on, Mr. Scooter, let's get up and... Uh, whatever, clean that plate, whatever it is. So hopefully all your Hobbit friends or uh, whichever of the Fellowship of the Rings, you'd feel most comfortable tucking you in. Be nice. Well, I, I, I can't imagine, no offense, Gandalf, like at first I was like, well, your robe would be pretty comfortable, but 
I bet it was strongly scented. Because, you you know, before you became the White Wizard, you definitely needed some some shampoo. So, a freshly laundered, uh, laundered robe of Gandalf's, a spice cake. And, I mean, tonight we bed down in a hobbit house, uh, warm and cozy and rest. Uh, and one day, I guess we'll see this show when it comes out. Uh, and probably we'll see if it's Timmy C or any who else is cast in this. I have no idea. Uh, good night. All right. I want to thank uh, people who reviewed the show on Apple pod- Podcasts recently. Uh, IOD. Uh, let's help Scooter make uh, this uh, by buying sleep phones. He has a discount. That's from Australia. Thanks. Uh, uh, some people don't. Uh, there's definitely people that don't. The ads doesn't work for, but uh, that's what makes the show possible. Sabrina, sleep with me is magical. I've tried almost every possible insomnia treatment and technique. This spike is the only thing that works for me. When I wake up during the night, I start I st- start solving problems. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, just thinking, yep, I hear that unnecessarily. Scooter's unique ramblings replace all that and put me back to sleep pretty rapidly. My three-year-old daughter, who also resists sleep now, falls asleep to sleep with me. Thanks so much, uh... Okay, couldn't sleep due to stress, uh, saw it solitude with friends beyond the binary, and it works. Uh, might help. I thought it might help me de-stress during the day, but I fell asleep. Uh, podcast works uh, for me. That's by Elvis, uh, Bike Mechanics in the G- uh, Great Britain. Uh, but if someone doesn't like you know, the show... Uh, Crimson says, uh, an over- ex-overnight worker, this is what I needed. Uh, I used to work night shifts, and this would reset my sleeping patterns. Uh, and now I use it whenever I have uh, trouble getting to sleep, and that's from Australia. I think I read the rest of these, uh, but uh, thank you, everybody, that takes the time to review the show. Sleep Me really is here as a free podcast because of the ads and the, the people who support the show. Uh, so, like, uh, like uh, you can support the show, you get free ad free episodes through our referral program or through our Patreon, or a lot of people, even patrons, like listening to the ads. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you're, if you're listening at this point, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm just, uh, <laughs> I'm here to talk you in. Uh, uh, but if you're thinking that, uh, like, uh, I don't know. Just had to communicate that in sleepy terms. Uh, but we also grow as a show by people spreading the word. That's why we reward people for the referral program. So there's that. And, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, what can I say other than thanks so much uh, for listening? And I'm going to tuck in here with a couple sponsors again. That's how we're able to be here for you. And uh, if you need more episodes, we're ready to go for you. Uh, good night.